Hey guys, today's video is on the top five ingredients for fungal acne. If you're new here, welcome. My name is Andrea. I'm a board certified dermatologist. I would love it if you would subscribe to my YouTube channel and hit the thumbs up. It really helps my videos out a lot. First of all, what is fungal acne? Fungal acne is a condition that results from overgrowth of a little yeast that naturally lives on everyone's skin called malassezia. It's also called pterosporum. And this is particularly a problem in people who have very oily skin. What ends up happening is that their oily skin plugs up their pores and that little yeast is down there within the oily pore and it proliferates too much and brings in an inflammatory response against it. And that results in fungal acne. It's very common in hot, humid climates. And it's also common if you are somebody who uh, works in a sweaty environment and you stay in your sweaty clothes, that sweaty, oily milieu gets trapped on the skin and can further contribute to the skin condition. People who are prone to this tend to have very oily skin and very active oil glands that put out a lot of oil and can plug up the pores, again, creating a little happy environment for overgrowth of that yeast within the pore. Fungal acne is most often located on the face. It can also be on the upper chest and back. Unlike regular acne, fungal acne, uh, the bumps are uniform in appearance, meaning they all basically look the same. And fungal acne, unlike regular acne, is itchy. So that's kind of how to tell the difference. Other risk factors for fungal acne include being on uh, antibiotics for a prolonged period of time. That can kind of change your skin microflora, favoring overgrowth of that little yeast. Also, if you have been on a systemic steroid like prednisone for a while, uh, that can actually be associated with fungal acne because what that does is put the brakes on your immune system. And so that little yeast is like, hey, nobody's keeping me in check. I'm just gonna go to town and the poor. And then once the, once the prednisone is stopped and your immune system kind of comes in, it's like, whoa, what the heck? You get this inflammatory response and you get fungal acne. The good news is that it is treatable with antifungal medications and it can you know, go away. Ingredient number one is a zinc pyrithium. Zinc pyrithium can be found in anti-dandruff shampoos, uh, as well as a favorite skincare product of mine that is fantastic for pretty much everybody, in my opinion, the Vanny Cream Z-Bar. Um, this is a facial bar, but you certainly can use it on the body as well. Zinc pyrithione as an ingredient has been used in dermatology for a long time to treat conditions related to uh, that little yeast. Zinc pyrithione is bacteriostatic and fungistatic, meaning it's gonna help put the brakes on that little yeast. It's also anti-inflammatory, which is gonna be helpful for calming down those little itchy bumps. And zinc pyrithion can put the brakes on proliferation of that little yeast, kind of telling it to, hey, <laughs> chill out with multiplying in the pore. How do you use it? Well, simple. You just use it as a wash, lather it to the affected area, whether it be the face or the chest. Let that lather sit on the skin for a few minutes and then rinse it off. That way you get the zinc pyrithione into the skin. And uh, you can use either an anti-dandruff shampoo like Head & Shoulders that has zinc pyrithione, but I am particularly fond of the Vanny Cream Z-Bar because it's very gentle and doesn't dry out the skin. Uh, the shampoo is an option, obviously, but it's not really formulated for the body, so it can be a little drying. Uh, but the Vanny Cream Z-Bar is great. It's also great for regular acne because that zinc pyrithione is so anti-inflammatory. Highly recommend it. It's a very good product. Um, I will list this down below as well as everything I'm recommending in this video. Ingredient number two is ketoconazole. What the heck is that? Uh, it's an antifungal uh, medication that can be applied to the skin to help reduce the burden of that little yeast. And it's also anti-inflammatory. The only product that you can buy over the counter that has ketoconazole in it, at least here in the States, is Nizorol shampoo. Um, and that is an effective option, again, Wash your face with it, let that Nizorol shampoo sit on the skin for a few minutes and then rinse it off. Again, it can also be used to other body sites where you might be coping with fungal acne. Now, if you um, see a board certified dermatologist or you, you, even your family physician will feel comfortable with this, uh, they can prescribe a uh, topical ketoconazole at a higher percentage, probably more effective. But uh, if you stay consistent with the over-the-counter stuff, that too can really help. So don't discredit uh, stuff that's at a weaker percentage strength over-the-counter, it can be helpful. Ingredient number three that is wonderful for both fungal acne and regular acne, even though they are two separate conditions, to be clear. Uh, ingredient number three is salicylic acid. Salicylic acid is wonderful. It helps to unclog the pore, 
remember a part of what's going on here is that your pour gets plugged up with all of your oil. And within that plugged up pour, the yeast are way too comfortable. So the salicylic acid, it concentrates in the pour. It loves that oil, it gets in there and it exfoliates the pour and clears it out. Salicylic acid is also anti-inflammatory, so that's going to help with that inflammatory response that leads to the itchy bumps. And salicylic acid is also uh, antimicrobial, so it can kind of help in reducing the burden of that little yeast a bit. And it helps uh, smooth out the skin surface as well and remove excess oiliness from the surface of the skin. There are a variety of fantastic salicylic acid based products on the market. Um, you can start with a salicylic acid face wash, but personally in this setting, I recommend using some of these other washes that I recommended and instead choosing a salicylic acid leave-on product. Um, that way you're able to piggyback multiple ingredients to address this issue. Uh, so rather than just using a salicylic acid wash, although that is an option, instead select a salicylic acid leave-on product. The way to use it is to just apply it to the affected area uh, in the evening and again in the morning if you tolerate it. It can be used twice a day to the, those affected areas, whether it be on your face or your chest or back. Now, salicylic acid can be very drying and very irritating. So start very slowly, you know, using it every other day, maybe at nighttime, uh, and then try introducing it nightly, and then try introducing it in the morning so that you're do it, using it twice a day. Uh, it can be very effective for helping to control this issue and, and get it under good control. Ingredient number four is clotrimazole cream. What the heck is that? It's actually a cream for, uh, for athlete's foot, which is a fungal infection of the feet. Different, different organism entirely. Not the same organism, but clotrimazole has a little bit of efficacy against reducing the burden of uh, malassezia yeast or pterosporum yeast in the skin as well. Um, and it's nice to have some option that you can buy over the counter that is in a cream form. We've talked about a lot of washes, um, and so it's nice to have a cream that you could put on the skin as another ingredient to incorporate. Uh, and it's pretty affordable. You don't need a heaping glob and you only need to use it to the affected area. Clotrimazole is also, any antifungal as a side note is going to also be anti anti-inflammatory, so it can maybe help with in reducing redness and irritation. So uh, that's, that's clotrimazole. It's a little different from ketoconazole. Ketoconazole, what I mentioned earlier, is probably even more robust at reducing, at reducing the burden of malassezia. But over the counter, you can only buy that um, one shampoo of it. Uh, so it's nice to have a cream form. You know, you can incorporate two different antifungals and you also get that benefit of having the anti-inflammatory anti effects of both ingredients on board as well. Last but certainly not least is selenium sulfide. This is another anti-dandruff ingredient. It helps reduce the burden of that little yeast and helps reduce inflammation. This is something that comes in a shampoo form again. So you can use it as a face wash or body wash. Again, as with any wash that has an active ingredient, you wanna lather it to the affected area, leave it on the skin for a few minutes and then rinse it off. This is something you can do in the shower. Um, and if you're talking about your face, you know, you can wash your face with it. So those are my top five ingredients for fungal acne. I will list in the description box all of my favorite products that have these ingredients. Um, but how do you how do you begin? Do you need to dive all in and go all in with all five of these ingredients? No, but it may be a good idea, depending on the severity of your fungal acne, to incorporate multiple ingredients. Uh, for example, you may want to use that Z bar that I mentioned with zinc pyrithione as a face and or body wash. Um, and you may also want to then apply a leave-on salicylic acid product to exfoliate the pore, open it up. And you may also want to use the clotrimazole cream. Uh, it all depends on what you can maintain and what's not going to be too irritating for you. Because of the nature of the skin condition, uh, remember that little yeast is down in the pore. And a lot of times topicals, they're just not going to target it effectively. 
Uh, in which case, I recommend seeing a board certified dermatologist because we can prescribe oral medications that will eradicate this issue uh, much more efficiently than the topical things. Uh, so these are things over the counter that can help clear it up for sure, but in many cases, prescription treatments may be needed. So definitely see a board certified dermatologist, but these are ingredients and products that you can get started with that can help. One more thing before I wrap up this video, and that is there is all of this hype on the internet about fungal acne safe. There is no such thing as fungal acne safe, and those websites, <laughs> they are so bogus. They go over like all of these random ingredients and rate them uh, as like feeding malassezia. It is complete anecdote bunk. <laughs> uh, you know, they'll like, I get comments all the time. Is this, is this product fungal acne safe? Is this product fungal acne safe? It's kind of, it's kind of cousin of another loosey goosey term, non-comedogenic. Um, it's a marketing term, although it's not really being applied to marketing. It's an internet hyped thing. So stop focusing on that. The pathophysiology of fungal acne relates to oiliness, in the pores, just a predisposition to that, and immune response, which, you know, there's not a cream that's immune response safe. <laughs> uh, it doesn't work that way. And also just, uh, you know, your climate, sweatiness, the environment that you live in, um, it doesn't really have anything to do with random, <laughs> random emulsifiers in a face wash. No, not at all. Uh, I mean, that's ignoring the science behind this this condition. Yeah, so I wanted to point that out. Don't get hung up on these fungal acne safe lists. I mean, just stop saying fungal acne safe. Let's make a pledge to stop saying fungal acne safe. I would love to eradicate that from our lexicon because I hate nebulous marketing things that are not substantiated in science. And the fungal acne safe thing is one of those things that if we keep putting it out there on the internet as a rea reality, then marketing you know, companies, skincare companies are gonna start putting it on their products. And it's like, oh, here we go again with, with you know, clean, green, things that don't mean anything that just confuse the consumer two bits. The ingredients I mentioned in this video can help, but again, oftentimes prescription remedies are necessary. And importantly, removing the aggravating factor, whether it be immunosuppression, long-term antibiotic use, um, you know, changing up your routine if you live in a hot climate so that you're not leaving sweat on the skin. These are things that can make a difference, not like obsessing over random ingredients and products. I hope this video was helpful to you guys. If you liked it, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and as always, don't forget, sunscreen and subscribe. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye.